Hey everyone, Fuse, welcome to my chat, and today I hope you're as excited as I am to be playing around with AR as you saw in that intro. Now to follow along with the tutorial, Google actually recommends using a Pixel, Pixel XL, or the Samsung S8. Now there is a hack that you can use to make this work on any device that's running with Android 7.0. In theory, this should work with the Samsung 8A Plus, as well as potentially even lower end devices. Let me know in the comments what you actually end up using. You'll also need to get the latest beta of Unity 2017. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you know how to deploy it with Unity to an Android device. So if you don't, I recommend checking out Unity Docs to figure out how to do that. And last but not least, you're going to need to download their SDK from either GitHub or their website. With that out of the way, we can just jump into this project. Okay, I've gone ahead and jumped into Unity, and I'm starting with this project, which is basically the shooting star that's fully complete, and I'm just going to explain it. If you want to follow along, then I definitely recommend downloading it from GitHub, or if you just want to play around with it yourself, definitely go check it out on GitHub. Now, to start here, I just want to explain what's going on here at the high-level folders. So, we've got a few folders here for materials and the scene itself for the shooting star. Now all of this is really just textures and setting material properties so that the particle systems can use them. Nothing terribly fancy going on. And when I jump into the shooting star scene, I'll explain a little bit about what's going on there. And then you have the Google AR core folder. Now if you downloaded the SDK off of GitHub, then you'll probably want to go ahead and replace this folder. The reason is that a Google AR core in the next few months that from when this video is released, they're probably gonna keep on updating it like crazy. So keeping up to date with the versions is pretty crucial there. Let's go ahead and open this up. And specifically, let's just dive into their Hello AR scene. I definitely recommend following along with their getting started and making sure you're able to get this running on your own device. The reason being is that this goes through pretty much every single feature that you will want to use in AR core. And I think that's actually pretty critical to making full use of it. So if you want to check it out, make sure it's all working, definitely put this on your device. So going through the hierarchy really quick, we have our AR core device, and I'll explain those components in a second. I think they'll make more sense once I explain everything else. And I just uh, attached to it is just a normal Unity camera. We've got a canvas here for our GUI, and that's always super important when you're dealing with phone-based AR environment lighting, and let me dive into this a little bit because I got a few questions on our last video about kind of what this day is. So you can see here, it's basically divided into two parts. If you're using the Unity editor, it just sets global estimation to one, which basically means it's not doing anything, which really makes sense because there's no type of remote deploying on your devices. And then you've got this code here, which is really what's controlling uh, how a, AR core is able to detect lights. So you can dive a little bit deeper into it, but I mean, basically what you're seeing here is it's taking the pixel intensities and then kind of offsetting that from a middle value using a linear ramp um, and then kind of effectively just averaging in a really fancy way. All it does that, once it does that, it goes through and just sets the global light estimation based on that color scale. Again, nothing terribly fancy. It's just one number that affects all of the shaders that are in your scene. So basically every single shader, and we'll see this in a second, is, basic, is getting this global light estimation. So in this specific scene, there's an example controller that it takes the Android prefab and then plops that in the scene. Go ahead and click on that and drag that in. We'll see that there's a shadow that comes along with this is basically a shadow geometry that it casts on planes. And then it also has this uh, regular geometry. And on this shader, you can see here, it's an AR core shader with diffuse light estimation. So that's basically, a, it's a standard diffuse shader, but then it's using the intensity that's set in that global property. And if we go into AR core here, we can see that we have a few more shaders that come built in with it. So that's kind of how light estimation is working at a really high level. Again, if you want, go ahead and dive into that code to kind of see what are the kind of steps that they take. Um, I mentioned the example controller. 
This tripped me up because I thought it was going to be an actual controller that you could use, but no, it's just controller of the scene and kind of game logic, so keep that in mind. We've got a point cloud here. Again, this is also controlled by a shader for basically manipulating the vertices um, of our cube. You can go ahead and set the point size and the cloud color however you want right there. Next, we have the event system, standard event system, and a, just a directional light that, again, is going to be using this light estimation. So that's basically all of the really cool features of AR Core. And again, I mentioned that I'd go ahead and jump back into the device here. Now, the reason that I think this thing is really interesting and the reason I actually thought the example controller was an actual controller is if you go to device, you'll see there's the device which it defaults to, there's controller, and then there's remote. So I'm interested to see basically what all three of these are. I think the controller is specifically interesting because imagine like a daydream controller with a camera on it that's positionally tracked. That I think would be really cool. Maybe that's something coming down the pipe. I'm not sure, but it seems like that's something they're thinking about. And then the rest here is just kind of standard for setting like the pose source, the tracking um, before render and the relative transform because again, just like AR kit, AR core is relative to wherever you start the device and then it moves based on that point. So that's basically what's happening in the pose driver. Then you have the session component and this is really driven by your session configura configuration. So in the session configuration, what you'll see here is it's just a file. You can create your own actually. But um, before I do that, let me just explain. There's the enable AR background, there's the plane finding, and then it's the point cloud. It's three things. Um, these are just kind of the core features that come with AR core. If for whatever reason you want to disable one of them, um, you can go ahead and set that up here. And the only, I think the only reason you'd want to disable it is you're not using the feature and you want to save a little bit on performance. That's not calculating this stuff in the background. And so you can just go ahead and disable it here. Um, if you want to create your own, again, just go into session config. But I think for most purposes, you'll probably just want to go ahead and keep this the same. Um, I think this the only interesting part here is if you just want a fully virtual world with just positional tracking, you might want to enable AR background. Um, so yeah, that pretty much does it for this. Again, I think the really interesting part here is that controller and we'll see what happens next. Uh, okay, so that's the example scene. Again, recommend building it. Let's go into the shooting star scene. So uh, let's go here. Here uh, we've got some three standard AR core prefabs that come with it, the point cloud, the environment light, and of course the camera. And then I just basically all I did was add in two particle effects. So this is a particle effect that uh, is for the shooting star. And the reason, again, that I didn't want to build this during this is just because it'd just be me clicking a lot of buttons, which isn't that exciting. But you can see here, it's just set to looping. I added a texture that I found to basically uh, go ahead and give it that starry feel. And uh, standard duration, I set the size to be pretty big because um, you really want to be able to see it. Uh, I also have the color over lifetime here with a little pulse. So if you actually look at some of them off in the distance, you'll see that they're they're pulsing a little bit. So that's an effect I added. Um, again, transparency, all of that stuff is really happening. You can change the emission. So currently what, what it's like is, I'm sorry, the shape. The, if you have the circle here and it's just coming from the rim, you can uh, manipulate the radius and however, whatever you like. So. That's basically what's happening. The nice part about particle effects is they, they're simulated on the GPU, so you're really going to be able to saving on performance there, especially because AR core is probably a lot of the calculations are happening on the CPU, um, and more on that in a second. But that that's kind of uh, just something to keep in mind, is that all of that is happening on your device, and it's pretty uh, computationally intensive. The other thing here is a meteor swarm, and this came from the Unity Asset Store. The only real big change I made here was instead of having the Meteor Swarm come immediately, I just have it set to whenever you click on your device. Um, it just gives you a little more control if you're trying to make some cinematic effects like, <laughs> like what you saw in the intro. But that's really all there is to it. And the neat part here is the reason this actually works is the fact that this particle effect 
it, I can keep it super far up and then it still looks pretty good. And really the only thing that's uh, causing this to uh, have that really awesome effect is the fact that it's so far away and that the the real world is adding a lot of value. So the, it's pretty cool to, have, to be able to simulate your own shooting star system. So that's pretty much all there is to setting up your scene. It's really, really simple actually. So let's go ahead and transition into actually making sure this works on your device. For this, what you'll need to do is go to your build settings, make sure that you have whatever your scene is. That's just kind of standard deployment. The things that are specific actually to Unity 2017's latest version are in your other settings. Again, making sure all of this is set. You'll want to have Android 7.0 as the minimum API. The reason being is that the services for AR Core will only work there. You'll need multi-threadings turned off. And as I mentioned before, this is, makes me think that it's actually running on the CPU and using multiple threads to actually get the performance that it needs. So you don't want to be rendering on multiple threads. Um, that's in theory what I think is happening. Um, and then again, just set a standard uh, package name and your product name, all of that stuff. The really interesting part here, and I mentioned this in a comment that uh, I responded to on the last video on AirCorp, was that you have XR settings here, which is what Unity is basically calling anything in this immersive reality. You can turn on VR support if you want, but it's interesting that you need to turn on what is called Tango support for AR Core to work. I don't know if this name is going to change to AR Core in the future, or if it's this is all part of this giant package that comes under Tango, but that's going to be really interesting to see where that goes. And I think Tango is a really awesome product. Well, I mean, not not many devices have that depth sensor, but if they do, it actually works surprisingly well. So we'll see where that goes. But pretty much once you have that done, um, assuming you've set up the Android SDK properly, and again, go check the Unity docs on how to do that. Go ahead and hit build and run, and then that'll get the APK on your device. The last step you need is you'll also need to make sure you install their specific AR Core services, which there's a link to that on the getting started page. Make sure you do that, otherwise your app is gonna crash, and it's actually very confusing why. De so really make sure you do that, and once you do, go ahead and try it out in AR. I hope you all enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to share it with a friend as that helps us out a ton. And if you want to keep up to date with all the things that are happening with Fuse VR, then definitely go follow us on social media. Until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.